from M&T Bank Stadium in Baltimore, Maryland. It's a special prime time edition of the NFL on EA Sports. We'll see Lamar Jackson and the Baltimore Ravens taking on Baker Mayfield and the Cleveland Browns. They love their crab cakes and they love their football. That's what Maryland does. And we are at M&T Bank Stadium down near the inner harbor of Baltimore. The two teams emerging from their respective tunnels a minute ago to the approval of this Baltimore crowd. They're all set as their Ravens will match up with the Cleveland Browns. Justin Tucker set to boom this one away. And off we go from M&T Bank Stadium. This taken in about four yards deep. And no run back here, so they'll bring it out to the 25. Here come the Browns on offense with Baker Mayfield, the former number one overall pick at quarterback. And I think Baker Mayfield has had a tremendous offseason getting ready for this one because he put the focus squarely on football and cut out a lot of the peripheral stuff. Just focused in on being the best quarterback and leader for his Cleveland Browns team. And now all he has to do, take care of the turnover issues of last year. 21 interceptions he threw, second most in the NFL. First carry for Nick Chubb, and he's upended after a gain of two out to the 27th. He was tackled. Well, any lane that might have been open there was closed pretty quickly, and that was because the defensive front, they won that battle at the point of attack at the line of scrimmage. They used great leverage, held their spot, and stacked him up. They'll break the huddle, come up on second and eight at the 27-yard line. Mayfield off the play fake. And he gets it to his running back, Nick Chubb. And he gets this one just shy of the 40. They'll mark him down at the 39. A gain of 13. It's a first down. So many times you hear today's NFL described as a space game. Get your best players into space with the football in their hands. That's why sometimes you just swing it out to your runner, get him out in the flat, and let him have a chance to make people miss an open field. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Throwing Mayfield and finding the tight end Hooper. And they'll get to him after a gain of seven to the 47. Austin Hooper. There's a completion to the tight end, and I think that we're looking at something out of central casting, frankly. Absolutely. I mean, size, the hands, speed. I mean, can flat out run. You put that whole package together, you light up the eyes of an offensive coordinator, don't you? Able to get seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. Mayfield hands it off to Chubb. And he stopped immediately there. Call it no gain that time as it's going to leave him with a third and about three to go. And as a defensive end, getting off the ball quickly, swarming to the football, making a tackle. That's what we saw right there. Yeah, and that's what their job is. And really, a lot of the time, they have to throttle back a little bit in the run game because you know those defensive ends are like in a sprinter stance. They're just headed straight for the quarterback. That was good recognition on that play to hold them to no gain. Oh, he almost picked it. Nearly a turnover there on their opening drive. And that's a throw he'd like to have back. Now fourth down. On fourth down, here's Jamie Gillen on to punt.
Yeah, he was looking for the checkup bounce, didn't get it. That scoots all the way into the end zone now for a touchback. The reigning league MVP, Lamar Jackson, trotting onto the field and leading the way now in his third season in the National Football League as this Baltimore offense gets set to go. And to me, he's one of the two most difficult guys in the league to game plan for in the NFL, and I add Patrick Mahomes in that category. But just about every team we talk to getting ready for Lamar Jackson says the exact same thing. We've got to slow him down running the football, yet no one's been able to really do it consistently. Now, the most impressive thing about his game to me, how he's developed as both a passer and a leader. His team believes in him. They'll throw on first down with Jackson. He's got a Ingram complete. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. Eight yards on the pickup brings up second and two at the 28-yard line. Line of scrimmage, the 28 now as they come up on second and a couple. They'll fake the give to Ingram. Now Jackson. They'll roll him out right. And he'll be brought down right at the 30 here. The improvisation gets him only a couple, but that's all he needed. First down. Offensively, they liked their situation, so they tried to take a shot downfield, but no one was open. So it was tucking in run time, and he picks up a first down. They'll run for the first time with Mark Ingram. And he'll have a gain of three to the 33. Number 21, Mark Ingram. The that's just a pile of bodies there, and that's when you kind of find out who's a tough guy, right? Who can stand up and make a play? It was only a three-yard run, but for both sides, they had to walk away from that feeling like, okay, I can stand up when the going gets tough in here. Second and six. No, scratch that. Second and seven. They run from the pistol with Ingram. Call it a gain of five there on the run, but they'll remain a yard or two short here with third down coming up. All right, Brad, I know we're in the early going here, but those kind of runs, they're going to open up a world of opportunities for this offense going forward. They'll try to run for the first with Ingram. And he's going to have a first down as he's brought down at the 44-yard line. Ingram, seven yards to pick up. First down, Baltimore. On third down, that's a good job of situational football and understanding where the first down marker was and getting there. First downs gives him a first and 10 up at the 44. And he takes this just a few yards shy of the red zone before going out. A big time gain there on the keeper, using his legs to hurt him. First down. And that was a nice, strong run by the guy they call the field general. So the big play gets him all the way down to the outskirts of the red zone here for first and 10. And now Jackson will look to throw it. He's got his man, it's Andrews. And they'll bring him down at the 18-yard line. A gain of six there on first. And there's a completion to the tight end. And look at the size of these players nowadays. At that spot, 6'4", six, 6'5", six, and up. A lot of guys used to be basketball players, somehow came back to football. And that's really good for the game of football. You get better athleticism, great hand-eye coordination, guys who know how to control their bodies when they run their routes. That is caught at the seven-yard line. And they work this near the five. He'll be stopped at the six. 
Jackson to Sneed that time. First down, Baltimore. No score after one on EA Sports. First and goal from the six. They'll run here with Ingram. And he'll take it into the end zone for a Ravens touchdown. A six-yard touchdown run. And they're able to strike first here on their opening drive. A strong, determined run there, Charles, to get in for six points. This is why it's such a team game, isn't it? And I know it sounds really generic and it sounds almost trite, but the blocks were made up front, offensive line, collective victory at the line of scrimmage and downfield. And how about the finish to the run all the way into the end zone? Justin Tucker for the extra point. lead at 7-0. A good drive that time as they go nine plays in all. And it's Mark Ingram who caps it off with a touchdown run. So not much time to speak of remaining in this first half as the kick's away. And this will make it into the end zone. And he'll just sit on this one as their drive will start at the 25. Second drive coming up here for Cleveland as they return to the field on offense. They'll be looking to match that touchdown from a moment ago. 7-0 is the score as they begin with a first down. carry now for Kareem Hunt. Now he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. They'd love to just strike back with a touchdown right here, and if it's a long play, so be it. But the main goal, get a couple of first downs, run some plays, run some clock, allow their defense to get a chance to catch their breath, settle down, and relax a little bit after they just gave up a score. Maybe a good spot to take a shot. Here's second and a yard from the 34. Back to the ground. This time it's Chubb, and he'll be brought down shy of the 40 at the 38-yard line. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. I know what you're thinking out there. I know a lot of you are thinking, take a shot downfield. It's a great spot for it. I'd say maybe later in the game, definitely in the second half. But right now, I think they were just trying to get some momentum built. Get a first down, pick it up, and keep moving. A first down throw for Mayfield. He's got the hook up to Odell Beckham. Mayfield's pass. Seven yards to pick up there. A seven-yard pickup brings up second and three at the 45-yard line. Working with a second and three. They go play action. Mayfield. Got a man. That's Rashard Higgins. 
And they're able to work this to the 25 before it's all said and done. Getting it to him in space pays off big time. That winds up going for 31. This offense has been slow to get started, but that play will certainly give them a little bit of life. Maybe the late wake-up call that they had been seeking. So in Raven territory now, here's a first and 10 at the 25-yard line. On first down, they'll run with Chubb. A strong, broken tackle on that one. And then they get him to the ground, just shy of the 15. Eight yards on the pickup, and now they'll have some options on second and short. I think he was trying to go through his progressions, find someone to get rid of the football before he knew it, he was on his back. So that just brings us right back to what you said in the beginning. A great job defensively. Nowhere to go with the football. That led to the sack. So third and five, defensively expecting pass. They've got six DBs out there. Working out of the gun, Mayfield. And this is caught for a Browns touchdown by Landry. Complete to Jarvis Landry. Jarvis Landry, there to make the grab. And the Browns are within an extra point of tying this thing up. Well, that's what I call an answer right there. They gave up a sack on the previous play. How about what they did to finish things off, turning it right back around? That's the response, and that O-line feels a lot better now, don't they? Yeah, without a doubt, because give up the sack in the previous play, that just hurts those guys, because they never want to see their guy get hit. Austin, Austin Seibert on for the extra point. It's up and good, and we're tied at seven here in quarter number two. So that winds up a seven-play drive all told. And it's Jarvis Landry who finishes it off with a touchdown reception. Austin Cyber. So I'll leave it at seven now as they kick it away. And this will make it into the end zone. And Hill will opt for the touchback. At their own 25 yard line. Baltimore set to take over here for their second possession of the game. And now last drive so successful with the ground game, ending in a touchdown. Do you stick with that formula? That would be the number one thing you would think of, but so many guys now would look at it and say, we've got them set up so well for play action, now's the time to take a shot. Yeah. But you know, there was a big time coach in the state of Ohio who once said, <laughs> if you throw the ball, if you put it in the air, three things can happen, and two of them are bad. <laughs> he would have kissed it on the ground. <laughs> Jackson hit, and he lost the football. And this is picked up by the Browns. And they'll start with great field position at the 41-yard line. He had the option there, decided to keep it, exposed himself, and fumbled it. Yeah, and you worry about the hits he's going to take in that situation. In this case, not only does he take the hit, he coughs the ball up, as you noted. 
And now Cleveland geared up to take the field. Now these guys hardly got a chance to catch their breath after the quick turnover, but I doubt they're complaining much. Especially with the field position they get to start with. I wouldn't be complaining either. I'd want to get right back out there and get after them because now you have an opportunity to make a big play. I'd say I'd let's be aggressive and go after him. A run for Nick Chubb. He's got a first out and more inside the 30. And down to the 16-yard line. 25 yards the pick up there and also a first down. That outside handoff to the left, that play has to warm the heart of an offensive line coach because they controlled the left side where they were supposed to, but they didn't allow anything to leak from the back side on the right side of the offensive line either. Well played. Yeah, and it created a big run. So the ball down to the 16 here for first and 10. On first and 10, Mayfield. That's out to Chubb complete. And he'll wind up getting about six out of that as that's going to lead us to the two-minute warning. Brings up second and four at the 10-yard line. We remind you that coming up at halftime, we'll pay a visit to Jonathan Coachman. He's in Orlando, and he'll have our EA Sports halftime report. The quick slant caught, and he's able to get it down to the two-yard line. Complete two Nine yards on the play there, and it sets him up first and goal. At the two and a lot of people ask the same question all the time. Why do we see so many slants in the red zone? Well, the windows are tighter. Everything's more condensed. It has to be quicker, and you've got to deliver the ball on time. Your biggest worry, the ball gets tipped in the air. And he takes this one in for a Brown score. Taking it in from two yards out, and the Browns have taken the lead. CD for them. This has just been an offensive explosion here in the second quarter. Yeah, it held scoreless in the first quarter. Now they find the end zone again here in the second. Sometimes you just have to have some patience. A lot of people think it's always an adjustment. You have to change what you're doing. Sometimes you just have to do your game plan just a little bit better. And I think that's part of what we're seeing here. Here's Cybert now to add the extra point. And he's got it. It's now a 14-7 ball game. A drive there of just four plays. And Kareem Hunt, the one to finish it off, as he did so with a touchdown run. So not much time to speak of remaining in this first half as the kick's away. That'll be taken about a yard deep. And tackled at the 21-yard line, so a net negative there of four yards. First and 10 at their own 20. Now the Baltimore offense heading back out onto the field. That 7-0 lead of theirs short-lived as they've now given up two straight touchdowns to fall behind by seven. Yeah, but no cause for discouragement here. Yeah, they've fallen behind, but haven't they proven that they can go down and score? So what was the formula that got them down there the first time? Get back to something close to that, and maybe they can get this game tied up. First and 10, it's Jackson. And they work this well upfield across the 45. A good pick up there, 26 yards. And I guess, Charles, sometimes when you have a receiver well over six foot, 
You do that. Just put it up there, let him grab it, and he did. And it certainly appears like a 50-50 ball, right? We always talk about that one. Both sides have a chance to get it, the receiver or the guy covering him. But I think the odds actually are in favor of the offense. They can see the ball coming oftentimes before the defender can get his head around. So I think that really goes to like 70-30, and they should be able to go up and get it most of the time. And he got it there. And 10. After the incomplete pass, here now is second and 10. Throwing again, Jackson. This one complete to Ingram. Now the Ravens gonna use one of their timeouts as the stoppage will come with a little under a minute to go in this first half. try to convert on third and six after the four-yard completion. To throw again is Jackson. Over the middle complete. It's Andrews. The Ravens going to use the second of their timeouts as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. first down it's Jackson rolling to his right they'll wind up getting nine after tucking it and running so it'll leave him with second and a yard well he's proven real effective running the football no one open don't force it just get what you can and that's what he's done very well in this game looking to throw again on second down Jackson, his throw caught right around the six. Ravens going to use their third and final timeout as they stop it with 16 seconds to go in half number one. The two-yard line. A chance now to get even before the break as they come up first and goal. Now it's Jackson. The touchdown, Ravens. Well, I'd have to say that for him, that was an all-encompassing drive because it was his arm that got his team down to that point, but his legs that finished the deal. Give him credit for making it happen. So this drive spans seven plays, and it was capped off by the touchdown run that came from Lamar Jackson. This is JoJo Natson. And they'll start this drive just across the 30. Pretty nice work on the return. The Browns take over first and 10 at their own 31-yard line. The 
the Browns drive about to get started. Time here for likely one play, and then these two teams will head to the locker room all even. And you know the play caller's just feeling it right now. Let's go ahead and go for this one. A big <laughs> shot down. Nope, nope, nope. Guaranteed the head coach is like, don't get crazy. Take the knee. Let's get out of here. Tie game. We'll just start all over. So thanks to the late touchdown, it's a tie ball game here heading to break. As we'll send you down to Orlando, we check in with Jonathan Coachman for our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. We thought this one would be a close battle coming in, and we have not been disappointed. But they are all even to this point. So to see if either side can pull away, let's get you right back out to Brandon and Charles for the start of the second half. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. tied on the scoreboard. Returning it, Justice Hill. And out a little across the 25 to the 27. Justice Hill on the return. The Ravens take over first and 10. And Up come the Ravens now. They'll go on offense first here in this third quarter. First half showed us some pretty good offense. Tie game. We'll see what the second half brings. And it'll be interesting because I think both sides feel pretty good about what their offenses are doing. Got to wonder what adjustments are being made defensively to try and get a spark and maybe slow down the other side. But here, do you change up anything on this opening drive? Not offensively, you don't. You've got everything going your way. You've probably prepared for maybe some change-ups you might expect, but overall, you like what your game plan showing you. You'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. He's taken down at the 33 yard line. Now, Brandon, that's the way you want to run the football. There should almost be quote bubbles above the offense right now. Bam, boom, biff. That's how they feel good about moving the football. And now look at this, big gain, but a fumble. But this will get out of bounds, so possession will stay the same. Second time he's fumbled in this game. Fortunate for him, this one goes out of bounds. And the key for him now is how much equity have you built up with your coaching staff? How much equity have you built up with your team to continue to get opportunities? Fortunate that one went out of bounds, saved him from a turnover. So now then, the big play has him all the way inside the 30 now, first and 10. Now Jackson. And this is caught at the 8. And they will eventually get him down, but he's inside the 5 all the way to the 3. A little over 20 yards there, and in two plays, they've now moved the ball over 60 yards. First How about a guy proving his worth in different ways? Had the big play in the run game to play before. This time, they go right back to him in the passing game, and he comes through with yet another big play. That's why you work out so hard in the offseason, so you can stay on the field and accumulate big plays. They'll come out in the pistol. Two big plays in succession. Not sure this D knows what hit them, but now they got to get ready. It's first and goal. And this time they were ready for him as they'll stop him right at the line of scrimmage. He'll wind up losing a yard on the play, and that'll make it second and goal. That's an excellent stop right there here in this tie game. They're doing their best to hold the fort and at least force a field goal attempt. at the four, here's second and goal. And again, it's Ingram. 
And he's maybe going to get this back to the four, but that's about all. Taken down. Call it no gain that time, and now it's third and goal. His path became similar to almost running a stretch play, didn't it? Trying to find a crease, anywhere to put his foot in the ground and cut back. It just never materialized. A big play forthcoming. Here's third and goal. From the gun, it's Jackson. He can, and he will score. Touchdown, Baltimore. Lamar Jackson, his second touchdown of the night. And the Ravens have broken the tie. And not a surprise at all for Lamar Jackson to find the end zone. He did it five times as a rookie, seven times during his MVP season a year ago. That's a little bit of a surprise to me because I would have thought he would have scored more. Had over 1,200 yards rushing, set a new record for quarterbacks in the NFL. But still, seven touchdowns, he's awfully elusive. Tucker to add the PAT. It's up and good, and that'll make the score 21-14. A drive that time of six plays, and it was capped off by the touchdown run that came from Lamar Jackson. Kick it away following the touchdown. And this will make it into the end zone. And no effort to bring this one out. It's a touchback. At their own 25-yard line. Here's the Browns now. They get set for their first possession of the third quarter. And this game was all square at halftime, but now they find themselves down seven following the opening drive touchdown here in the third quarter. And they need to take a good, relaxing, deep breath, don't you think? Because right now they might start to feel like they've got to play catch up here and start matching them point for point. But it's still too early to get there. They can still run their offense. Plenty of time to get back in this game. Mayfield going to lead the Browns up now, first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. From the gun, he'll set up to throw. This pass complete to Higgins. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. Nice way to start the drive, a gain of 12 and a first down. And the Browns. You can see the time and effort and thought that they put into their passing game because it was evident right there. It looks like a simple pitch and catch, but you and I both know that they have planned for this and worked hard to make it happen. Mayfield to throw it quickly into the hands of Beckham. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. 14 yards, and it's a Cleveland first down. That was a nicely run slant route, and what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps and cuts towards the middle of the field. And now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and give the quarterback a really nice target. Now Chubb. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. No gain on the play. And he got off the end there very quickly to make that play. Yeah, it was almost like the bullet train, wasn't it? I mean, just so quick, quick, quick. And what a terrific play, holding them to no gain. We're in Baltimore, third quarter action, second and 10. Mayfield now. And he's got the hook up to Landry. Nine yards, not quite enough, and they'll be left now with third and one. In so many ways, throwing the hitch route is actually one of the safer things an offense can do. Get the ball out to the receiver as fast as possible, hope he's got man-to-man -man coverage, and hope that his athleticism wins on the perimeter. This is third and one, very likely four down territory, even if they don't get it, though. They'll run for it. Here's Chubb. 
And he will be very close to a first down, but I see the close fist of the referee, and that means fourth down. Give him a yard on the play, and he's definitely short. It'll be fourth down and a few inches. Absolutely love the effort there. The ability to flow from his inside spot and stop that one at the line of scrimmage. Nice linebacker play. Here's Jamie Gillen now as he'll kick it away for the second time. And they won't risk defending a return here. That one's out of bounds, and it'll be spotted, spotted at the 14-yard line. Here comes the Raven offense now, ready for another possession. And that last drive was very, very balanced, pretty methodical. You think they go that route again? I'm always of the school that until they stop me from doing something, I'm going to continue. And I think that that's exactly what they'll look to do. But the beauty is the balance that they've created sets up opportunities for big plays. Looks like a run, turn into a play action, and throw one deep. Here's a first and 10 at the 14-yard line. They'll run with Ingram here to begin the drive. And brought down, but not before they're able to get it up to the 25. Right off the bat, it's a first down to start the drive, 12 yards. He's obviously a bit of a shorter running back. Sometimes when he goes up the middle like that, he gets lost in there, and then he pops out for 10, 20 yards. I actually asked NFL linebackers if that was true. Do you actually lose sight of some of the smaller running backs? And all of them confirmed that that can be a problem. Think of it this way. Two of the top running backs in NFL history, Emmitt Smith, Barry Sanders, both 5'10". And he will lose yardage here back at the 23-yard line. Two yards the loss, second and 12. I'll tell you what, this defense hasn't played its best, but they're still right in this football game. And if they keep making plays just like that, they're going to give their offense a chance. At the 23, it's second and 12. Out of the gun, they give to Ingram. And he'll go down, and that will do it for the third quarter of action. Back now in Baltimore. It's the Ravens in control of the football. They've also got the lead as we get set for the fourth. on third down. A perfect three for three as they look to keep that streak going. This is third and seven. Jackson from the shotgun. Flush to his right. He may try and run for this. Jackson always a threat to run. He's got the first down. He was the NFL's leading rusher among QBs a year ago. That is an absolute backbreaker. That was a design passing play. Wasn't a draw. You think you got him stopped. Good coverage downfield. And he's able to pick up the first with his legs. Defensively, that kicks into your psyche and hurts a little bit, doesn't it? It certainly does. And, and here's the thing. Anytime you give up a first down, it hurts you psychologically. But it hurts more when they get it this way because you've covered everything. He didn't have any place to throw the football. He takes off running and picks it up anyway. And now you have to stay on the field for an extra set of downs. And really could have used that stop trailing here in the fourth. Only a yard on the keeper and it'll be second down. This drive is pretty clear. Almost feels like old school fundamentals, doesn't it? Want to impose their will on the defense. Was that five straight runs? Yeah, five straight carries to start this drive. And like you said, the way it's working, they may just stick with it. On second and nine, Jackson. It's caught inside the 25. It's a gain of 34. Well, he's definitely a big target out there, listed as six foot four, and he used every one of those extra inches to go up and make that catch. So 
So the big play gets him all the way down to the outskirts of the red zone here for first and 10. From the gun, Jackson. His throw caught right around the six. They'll take it into the end zone for a Ravens touchdown. From 21 yards away. And the Ravens will add on to their lead. I know these wide receivers are about flash and dash and high flying plays, but a good number of them played running back at some point in their career, and that's how they finish off a lot of their big plays, run after the catch. And this time he finishes off the big play in the end zone. Tucker now for the extra point. The extra point. He's got it as they double up the lead. This one's now 28-14. So that drives seven plays in length. And it's capped off by the Baltimore score. across the 20 to the 21-yard line. The Browns take over first and 10 at their own. Ready to take over again on offense. Out comes Cleveland. And down on the scoreboard, certainly needing to avoid what happened on the last drive, punting the football. Sense of urgency has to take over for them here. They know the score. They know the situation. And by the way, the punter no longer exists for their <laughs> offense. That's how they have to treat this drive. They need points. Big time. Mayfield going to lead the Browns up now, first and 10 at their own 21. And he'll drop here to throw. And a scary incompletion, almost picked off. It would have been their first INT of the game. Instead, second down. He was covered by From the snap, he certainly looked like he knew where he wanted to go with the ball, but surprise, that guy was covered. So that took his attention elsewhere to no avail. From the 21, it's second and 10. 65, 65. 65. From the shotgun, it's Mayfield. That one is caught by Hunt. And he'll go down just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. He'll get only three there, so it leaves him with a third and seven ahead. You got the big lead defensively willing to give him that underneath stuff, right? And this is why you work on your tackling. Tackle him after the catch, inbounds, keep the clock running. Just go ahead and bleed the game out that way. And that's going to be incomplete. The coverage too good there. The contact popped the ball free, and it's fourth down. He did a fine job there of not hitting him before the ball arrived, and I've got to tell you, you can often mistime that play because of the angles of approach. When you're going to get him, sometimes you panic as well and think, I've got to be there right now. Instead, in this case, timed it perfectly and knocked it free. All right, they're going to try and keep hope alive here on fourth down. They're going for it. Desperation time, Mayfield on fourth down. He'll let it go deep. It's caught inside the 25. And all the way in, touchdown, Cleveland. Odell Beckham, 76 yards. And the Browns have cut it back within a score. No, we're not cheering. No, we're not rooting. But I am excited about this. I know you are, too. We got a ball game again after that big-time strike. Big-time strike, and you are right. Don't go anywhere yet. This thing's not done. Yeah. 
Seibert on for the PAT. He's got it, and they're back within a touchdown at 28-21. Just a four-play drive that time, and it's capped off by the Browns' touchdown. Off following the touchdown, here's Seibert now to kick it off. Fielded a couple yards into the end zone. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. On the return, the Ravens take over first and 10 at their own 20. The Ravens offense back out there. And now after the touchdown a moment ago, they work from behind in a seven-point game in this fourth quarter. Plenty of time on the clock. Jackson and the Ravens come up now first and 10 at their own 22. And now he'll tuck it. Jackson hit, and he lost the football. Mark Ingram. That's good. When that ball popped free, we could hear it all the way up here. Those guys down on the field alerting everyone to the fumble. He's lucky that his offensive mates picked him up and jumped on him. Yeah, and you have to think to yourself, and I'm sure they've been echoing it on the sideline and into the huddle. Guys, we have the lead. Just take care of the football. Don't make it easier for them to start to make a comeback. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. Give him four yards there on the first down keeper. Well, on every play call, you realize it's not going to go for a touchdown. So a lot of your calls are setting things up for maybe later in the game, trying to establish the inside run, run with toughness now. Hopefully get to the perimeter later, and let's face it, you could do worse than a four-yard run on first down. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. Call it no gain on the keeper, and it's going to bring up a third down. Fourth quarter, down to the final two minutes, and we've got a one-score game. So it's Raven football here as we welcome you back. They're facing a critical third down now as they try to hold on to this lead. And a nice job there defensively. They get him to the ground short of the first, right around the 42. And now right out of the two-minute break, we'll get a timeout used defensively with a minute 56 to go. Here's Sam Cook now, as he's on to punt for the first time tonight. Fair catch signaled for and taken at about the 15-yard line. They call it 38 yards on the punt, no return. And the Browns will take over with a first and 10 deep in their own territory. Now Mayfield and the Browns. Down 28-21, a minute 51 on the clock. Needing to go pretty much the length of the football field as they have it first and 10. Mayfield to throw. 
Incomplete. Mayfield's got to be fine, Take a deep breath, because that's what they're doing down the field now. That incompletion allowed them to exhale a little bit. Get in the huddle, kind of scan the crowd, see if any celebrities are here. Relax a little bit as they start this big drive. So now second and ten after the incompletion on first down. Mayfield looking middle and it's incomplete. The intended receiver was Rashard Higgins and now it's third down. So back to back incompletions now third and ten and first things first before you think about marching the ball down the field you got to move the chains. You're exactly right. Got to get back into focus here. Get the first down. That's what's vital to them. Big play coming up. Here's third and ten. I would expect to see some pressure here. The pressure drops off as they'll look to throw. And he knocks the ball away, and it falls incomplete. They probably spent a little extra time dissecting the game film after this when I think the part of their plan was to hit him over the top of the deep ball. They've been unsuccessful all night. Down seven, and they've got to go for it here on fourth down. Now Mayfield. He finds Beckham complete. And way up past the 35 before he's taken down. They keep the game alive, at least for the moment, as it's a first down. Browns. First down now, but that clock rolling. He's back to throw. He finds his target, Beckham. And he'll take this to the other side of midfield before going out of bounds. Another first down as they call his number again. He's got 15 yards here. They got exactly what they wanted there. Out route, catch, get out of bounds, stop the clock. And I have to criticize defense here because you know the situation. You want to keep them inbounds and have the clock run. So I'm sitting on the outside portion of the field and not letting them throw an out route. Throw anything inside and I'll make the tackle an out route. That, that's not the way you're supposed to play it. continues as they search for a tying touchdown. Here's first and ten. Back to throw. Gets this to Kareem Hunt, his running back. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. Inside of a minute to go now, two timeouts left, still in pretty good shape. I think they're in excellent shape here if they use the timeouts judiciously and use the sideline as an additional timeout. Mayfield trying to get him up to the line as fast as he can. Man open, that's Damian Ratley. And he gets it down to the 32. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. And remember, field goal does him no good in this situation. You got to think they should be taking some shots for the end zone soon. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. Here's Mayfield. He's going to dump this off to his running back, Hunt. And he'll be pulled down as a penalty flag will rain in as well, and that would appear to be a face mask. Well, when you're leading in the fourth quarter, that's not the penalty you want. Not at all, and now your discipline comes into question. Having poise this stage of the game, 
You can't have those kind of plays. So now after the face mask penalty, here's first and goal. He'll look to throw. This will be caught just inside the 10. The Browns will quickly use their third and final timeout as the clock will stop with an even 20 seconds left to go. The line of scrimmage, the seven now on second and goal. Back to throw. And he can't get a throw away. He's taken down. Calais Campbell in there to drop him as that clock continues to run. It's third down and goal. Tonight, well, no doubt, an electrifying finish to have it down inside the 10-yard line. That final shot, though, they couldn't get it in the end zone. And that's all she wrote. And they had the final shot. The last snap taken that close to the end zone. They don't get it in, so they'll regret that. But flip it over, making a stand in that portion of the field. Congratulations to them. So that'll just about do it for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, log on to easports.com. The Ravens are victorious here as we say so long from Baltimore.